In this video, the gray arc welder has been turned on to a low power setting of two, and that should be light. However, you'll see it creates a significant spark. Now, further, person will turn off the machine and at which point it should be safe and there should be no emission of electricity. However, you'll see it is so powerful, it breaks the chain despite it being turned off. As far as I know, this video is authentic. It was sent to me as a response to a story that I had posted. It's taken by a customer of mine who had originally purchased the welder as part of a training package. She and her husband actually burnt themselves when they were practicing welding. And they had filmed this because there was tussle with the manufacturer who eventually did admit that this is a problem, that it can happen. Now, I'm not saying that this will happen with every one of these machines. Um, I actually, I've never worked with it and I've seen many of them and you can purchase these machines, uh, this particular machine on Alibaba and on Amazon. I am more concerned about injuries and possible lawsuits. I contacted a licensed electrician and uh, an electrical engineer to try to figure out what is causing this and if there is a safe way of neutralizing the built up electricity, I guess the power, built up power so that when you turn it off, it will be safe and this doesn't happen. This is what they said, and I hope I'm saying it right. So I printed it out just in case. For arc pulse welders, there is a powerful capacitor inside the machine. And what it does is it holds the charge, the built up energy there, so that you, when you're welding, you're basically clamping onto the piece with the ground and you're so short circuiting. And that, that is what happens with the weld. And for safety, there is usually a resistor, which then when you're not using it or when you get it turned off, it dissipates, it releases, discharges um, built up energy slowly. Or it could be a relay acting like a switch when the machine turns off, it shorts the output and discharges the capacitor. So instead of discharging uh, all that energy in a millisecond, like, and then turns into a big snap, as you've seen in, on the video, the capacitor, the energy that is stored in the capacitor is released slowly over a number of seconds. So then according to my electrical engineer friend, this is his advice. Since the machine, the one in the video, might not have the resistor built in, obviously in that video, it just snapped and it was a big buildup of energy. If you don't have it built in, then you can get a big resistor, say one kilo ohm or so. After turning off the machine, you want to short the welder tip to the ground tip through the resistor. So you're rigging up your own um, resistor to discharge the potential buildup inside the capacitor. Anyway, he drew this diagram for me. Now, he thought, oh, he suggested you should actually build this. This is great video um, fodder. Yeah, no, I am not going to do that. I'm not going to mess about and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want anyone to get seriously injured. 
have a great big lawsuit. I would say, and I'm not suggesting anyone try it either. I think it is much better that you go back to your manufacturer and ask for some safety devices that so that it does not happen. I think that is a safer bet. You can have serious injuries. So that is my advice. The micro welders I've been using in my videos are made by Sunstone Engineering out of Utah. All of them have the safety mechanisms built in. So that's why I've never had experience of this crazy problem and I had to ask the experts. Also, this particular machine in the video, there have been a number of complaints about unstable discharges high wattages, and there have been a number of problems. You can see those comments in the Perma Jewelry forums. Um, and actually, those are really good places to get information and honest reviews. So you might want to check them out. Some of the complaints about this particular welder include a discharge of electricity as you move closer as you move the electrode closer to the item you want to weld even before it makes contact physical contact that means it is actually jumping arcing in the air and that is really dangerous and i don't have any footage about that i asked my um the electrical engineer and he told me that why that is happening is there is a buildup of charge uh, on the electrode itself so that as it's getting closer it is arcing and jumping making welding even when you're not that you're not touching it's almost like the the science fair where you put your hand out and there's electricity uh, that's coming out of the globe and your hair stands up Kind of like that that is really unsafe the reason why it doesn't happen with the sunstone welders is that is not where it stores um the electricity the power and it has a sensor built into it that makes it smart enough to know that it is either in contact or not in contact and so that when you're not in contact with the ground um, the piece for, for the welding, it is safe to touch. You'll notice uh, sometimes I, in the videos, I touch it with my, my bare hands. And even if by accident, I'm touching the ground, the ground pliers with the item, unless you hold it still, it does not weld, it doesn't arc. It sends uh, a warning of like a, a beep, a, sm a small sound to let you know so that you're not by accident bumping into it or, or whatnot there there are safety mechanisms in place to avoid potential well accidents or injuries we received an email and a few comments actually of this particular welder the stylus that you hold the, the apparatus for welding the stylus can sometimes give you a, a low buzz when you're holding on to it, or sometimes there have been comments of it shocking you. And the solution has been to wrap electrical tape around the stylus when you're holding it. I and mean, that's just, that's crazy, that's dangerous. Everyone has access to Amazon reviews. So quickly, if you look through them, you can see some of the bad reviews and those are alarming. I'm gonna read some to you. Lawsuit waiting to happen by Harp Love Taco in the US. This was terrible. If I actually tried to use this welding machine on my customers, I would get sued. I could weld on cars with this machine. It will melt your precious metals and embed them in you and your customer's skin. This was a very bad joke. Yeah, I returned it. Just buy the brand name one by Missy. 
If you're here because you're trying to find a good price on a piece of equipment for permanent jewelry, just buy the brand name one. The inconsistency with this machine will not make for a smooth client experience if you can get it to weld at all. Buy the expensive one by Erica Bollinger. Horrible product, going to process a return, completely burned through all of my gold pieces. The instructions are terrible, waste of my time. It's good, but may not work for everyone by Nicholas Kerbo. I got this product to take care of annoying soldering jobs and possible permanent jewelry. The first thing I soldered was an old paper thin silver bangle I could never put back together. To my surprise, this thing worked, but it also destroyed a section I attempted at afterwards. I have yet to try a chain, but from how it's starting, it might not turn out well. Also, wear goggles and rubber gloves. I didn't and regret it. This also produces a lot of heat, so your customers will need something to cool them down. Maybe a non-flammable jelly or a wet napkin. And that is the review. I gotta say, from that, the idea that you have to wear rubber gloves, this thing can produce a huge amount of heat. It is not safe for permanent jewelry, I feel. And from the video you saw earlier, you can see the amount of power even at a low two, two power second setting. So it is not right and it's scary. Yes, for welding, you should, for permanent jewelry, use protective leather. But the fact that it produces that much heat that you need to wear gloves or have wet napkin to cool the person down, I feel is terribly unsafe. I know there'll always be dissatisfied customers, but those are not reasonably poor reviews. If the equipment was safe, poor reviews would sound like late delivery. Something was missing from the box. I tried to turn it on, but it wouldn't turn on. Something like that. And the manufacturer should absolutely remedy that immediately. But if the reviews are sounding like it exploded, it blew right through my jewelry, it shocked me. Now that, those should really ring some alarm bells. I know it is so tempting to save a few hundred dollars Goodness knows I'm frugal. But I think in this case, safety should be your first concern. It is much better to save up for a little bit longer to get a certified safe machine rather than jump right in and buy something that is cheaper and potentially unsafe. It is your business on the line. And I think that you should have a more long-term view rather than short-term and short-term gains. By the way, if you are located in Canada or in one of the EU countries, most likely your insurance policy will insist that you only use equipment that is CSA certified. Any injuries that occur while operating equipment that is not CSA certified will invalidate your insurance coverage. You will not be covered. So you better read the fine print of your policy. And the last time I checked at the date of this filming, the gray welder in that video is not CSA certified. Please let me know what you think. Comment below. Tell me what your experience has been. Do you own one of these gray welders? And would you consider creating your own resistor? Or perhaps you have another hack that has worked. Or perhaps you've never experienced this. I'd love to hear from you. And if you do not own one of these gray welders, what are you using? What do you like about it? What don't you like about your machine? I'd love to hear from all of you.